ever wondered how life would be on the moon? The moon, our closest celestial neighbour, may seem familiar with its comforting glow in our night sky, but what lies beyond that glow is an environment that's far from friendly. It's an alien world that bears little resemblance to the hospitable conditions we enjoy on Earth. The moon is a realm of extremes. Its temperatures swing wildly from the searing heat of the lunar day to the bone-chilling cold of the lunar night. Think of it as the ultimate desert, with daytime temperatures soaring to around 260 degrees Fahrenheit and then plummeting to minus 280 degrees when darkness falls. But it's not just the extreme temperatures that make the moon inhospitable. It lacks an atmosphere, an essential layer that shields us here on Earth from harmful radiation and helps moderate our climate. Without an atmosphere, the moon is exposed to the full fury of the sun's radiation, making it a highly radioactive environment. And if that's not enough, there's the issue of micrometeorites. These tiny particles, traveling at high speeds, constantly bombard the moon's surface, posing a threat to any potential lunar dwellers. Imagine living in such a harsh and unforgiving environment. That's the reality of the moon. To survive on the moon, the first necessity would be a reliable shelter. The moon's harsh conditions demand a habitat that can not only withstand extreme temperatures and radiation, but also provide a life-supporting environment for humans. Enter lunar bases and inflatable modules. Lunar bases, akin to modern-day apartments, would provide a comfortable living space with all the amenities needed for survival. They would need to be self-sustaining, recycling air and water, and potentially growing food. These bases would be built with materials capable of shielding inhabitants from harmful radiation and temperature extremes. Inflatable modules, on the other hand, offer an exciting option for lunar habitation. Imagine a lightweight, compact and portable habitat that can be inflated to a comfortable living space once it reaches the moon. These modules offer an advantage in terms of transportability and establishment. Built with robust, radiation-resistant materials, they can serve as an efficient shelter on the moon. The key to these habitats is self-sustainability. They would need to utilize lunar resources like water ice for life support and propulsion. They could use solar energy for power and their design would have to minimize waste, recycling as much as possible. Remember, the moon is a harsh mistress and surviving there requires not just bravery, but also a robust and reliable home. A safe and sustainable habitat is the first step to life on the moon. Air, water, food, the basics of life. But how do we get these on the moon? Well, the answer lies in the life support systems. These systems are no less than technological marvels designed to replicate the Earth's conditions in the harsh lunar environment. First, let's talk about air. Oxygen generation systems are used to produce breathable air, while carbon dioxide scrubbers eliminate the exhaled CO2. These systems work in unison to maintain a balanced and livable atmosphere. Next is water. It's not just for drinking, but also for hygiene and cooling equipment. Water recovery systems recycle every drop, from humidity in the air to astronauts' sweat and even urine. Yes, nothing goes to waste. Speaking of waste, waste management systems are crucial. They not only dispose of solid waste, but also recycle it into useful components like fertilizers for growing food. Food, the final frontier. Hydroponics and aeroponics could be used to grow fresh produce, providing essential nutrients. Sustaining life on the moon is as much about these systems as it is about the habitat. Radiation, a silent, invisible threat on the moon. As we venture into the lunar landscape, one of the most significant challenges we face is the constant and unforgiving exposure to cosmic radiation. This invisible foe is much stronger here than on Earth, due to the lack of a protective atmosphere and magnetic field. Prolonged exposure to this radiation can have serious health implications, from acute radiation sickness to long-term damage such as cancer. Therefore, shielding and protection from this harmful radiation is of paramount importance for long-term lunar habitation. A variety of techniques are being explored to mitigate this risk. One such method is the use of lunar regolith, the layer of loose, fragmented material covering solid bedrock. It's abundant and can be used to build protective shields around habitats. Other promising techniques include the development of radiation-resistant materials and even the use of magnetic fields to deflect harmful particles. Protection against radiation is crucial for prolonged life on the moon. Moving around on the moon, it's not as simple as taking a stroll in the park. The moon's gravity is only one-sixth of Earth's, 
making every step a leap and every jump a potential flight. But such conditions also open up fascinating possibilities for transportation and mobility. Just imagine lunar rovers bouncing around, covering vast distances with each bound. Equipped with specialized wheels, these rovers could traverse the moon's rugged terrain, enabling us to explore its craters, mountains, and valleys like never before. But why stop at rovers? Picture this. Hoverbikes gliding effortlessly over the lunar surface, propelled by the moon's weak gravity. These could provide a faster, more thrilling form of transport, making every trip an adventure. And let's not forget about the potential for a lunar train. A network of tracks could crisscross the moon, linking habitats and research facilities. Trains propelled by magnetic levitation could silently glide along these tracks, providing a reliable and efficient means of transport. However, these are not without challenges. The moon's dusty surface could clog machinery, while its extreme temperatures could play havoc with electronics. But with a combination of smart design and robust materials, these obstacles can be overcome. Mobility on the moon is a challenge, but it's not an impossible one. With the right technology and a bit of lunar ingenuity, we can turn the moon into our playground. The moon, a treasure trove of scientific opportunities. The moon, our closest celestial neighbor, holds a wealth of knowledge waiting to be discovered. Its stark landscape, untouched by wind or water, preserves a record of our solar system's history etched in its craters and plains. Imagine peering into the moon's geology, delving deep into its craters and mountains. Each layer reveals a new chapter in the moon's story, helping us understand the processes that have shaped not only our moon, but other celestial bodies as well. On the other hand, the moon's thin atmosphere, known as an exosphere, is a fascinating subject of study. It's a stark contrast to our own thick, life-giving atmosphere, but it holds secrets about the moon's past and may even give us clues about other planets with similar atmospheres. And let's not forget about lunar resources. The moon is believed to harbor resources such as water ice and helium-3. Water ice can be used for life support and propulsion, while helium-3 holds potential for nuclear fusion, a clean and efficient source of energy. The moon's surface is also a perfect place for astronomy. Without an atmosphere to distort light, telescopes on the moon could capture images of the universe with unprecedented clarity. The moon offers a unique platform for scientific research and exploration. The bounty of scientific opportunities the moon presents is vast. It's a stepping stone to understanding our universe and a laboratory for testing technologies and strategies for future space exploration. Life on the moon isn't just a physical challenge, it's a psychological one too. Imagine being thousands of miles away from Earth, surrounded by the stark, silent lunar landscape. This isolation, coupled with the confinement within a lunar habitat, presents unique psychological challenges. Humans are social creatures. We thrive on interaction, communication, and connection. The moon's environment, however, is devoid of these. There are no bustling cities, no serene parks, no coffee shops filled with chatter. Instead, there's an eerie silence, a vast emptiness. This can take a toll on one's mental health, leading to feelings of loneliness, anxiety, and depression. Moreover, the confinement within a lunar habitat adds another layer of complexity. Space is a premium on the moon. Habitats are designed to be compact and efficient, which means there's little room for privacy. Living in such close quarters with others can lead to tension and conflict, testing the patience and cooperation of even the most tight-knit teams. But it's not all doom and gloom. The human spirit is remarkably resilient. Overcoming these psychological challenges presents an opportunity for growth. It necessitates the development of robust coping mechanisms, such as maintaining regular communication with loved ones back on Earth, engaging in recreational activities, or practicing mindfulness and meditation. Furthermore, it underscores the importance of teamwork. A lunar colony would rely heavily on the collective efforts of its inhabitants. Team members would need to work together support each other, and resolve conflicts effectively. This shared experience, the shared mission, could foster a sense of camaraderie, a bond that transcends the confines of the lunar habitat. In conclusion, life on the moon presents a unique set of psychological and social challenges. But these are not insurmountable. They are merely another facet of the grand adventure that is lunar living. They remind us that the moon isn't just a barren rock in space but a new frontier for human exploration, discovery and growth. 
The human mind is as much a frontier for lunar living as the moon itself. 